Good morning, viewers. Welcome to today's session of live interaction. Today's our topic is understanding climate change and calculating ecological footprint. So for today's discussion, in our studio, we have invited Mr. Ara Rashmi. He is an IS and retired as Chief Secretary, Government of Manipur. He is a noted expert on environmental affairs and policies. He has served in the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India, first as Joint Secretary and later as Special Secretary, where he was responsible for implementing several environmental policies and programs of the government. He was India's principal negotiator in UN negotiation on climate change from 2008 to 2013. Sri Ara Rashmi is current, currently Distinguished Fellow in the Energy Resources Institute, Terry, New Delhi, where he leads the Center for Global Environment Research. Welcome to our studio, uh, Mr. Welcome. Rashmi. And I am here, uh, Tanu Malik, and today we will be discussing on this topic. So, uh, my first question is for you, that what is climate change and how it is affecting all of us? The problem of climate change uh, is not new. Uh, climate change is a natural phenomenon. The change in climate is very natural. It is a natural process. The issue or the problem which has been highlighted in the recent times uh, with regard to climate change is the fact that the variability of climate or the rate of rate at which the climate changes, that has become a matter of concern uh, of late. And there are several reasons, you know the climate changes because of uh, various factors, there are geographical, uh, the terrestrial factors, there are astronomical factors. Uh, but in amongst the terrestrial factors, the factors which uh, arise from within the atmosphere of the earth and the way uh, the species live here. Uh, amongst those factors, one particular factor which has caused concern recently is the, is the rising concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Very true. And that is uh, happening because of the way we are consuming fossil fuels. That is of course, giving rise to emissions, higher emissions of carbon dioxide and that gets concentrated in the atmosphere. It gives rise to greenhouse gases, which uh, cause a greenhouse gas effect in the atmosphere. They trap the temperature, the temperature of the earth is rising. And uh, therefore, the rate at which the change in the uh, climate is taking place because of this global warming, that is a little. Um, uh, matter of great concern and uh, that is why in the recent times you see so much being written and talked about climate change. Exactly. Thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, for young viewers, it becomes difficult to understand certain phenomena, but they are unable to correlate certain things. Like recently, it was in the news that there is a lot of forest fire in California at three places, because of which mm -hmm. three lakh people have been displaced and death toll has reached up to 25. Can those kind of things also be uh, due to the climate change? Yes, uh, climate change uh, can uh, manifest itself in many ways, uh, you know, because of the uh, uh, warming, the global warming and uh, the increasing concentration of the carbon dioxide or, or the other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The different parameters of climate start changing very, very um, rapidly. And they can cause uh, changes in the natural phenomenon. For example, the cyclones, the winds, the um, uh, melting ice in the Arctic and the Antarctic region, the polar region, the uh, sea level rise, the water level of the sea itself can start rising because of thermal expansion of the sea itself and also because there is a general uh, rise in the temperature the floods, the droughts, these are all matters of concern to us, because uh, these are the visible impacts of climate change in our lives. So, climate change basically affects the way we conduct our uh, life uh, on the earth. 
So, when the these various dimensions of the climate start getting affected, it affects the productivity of the human systems also. The way we conduct, uh, we live uh, our lives for example, the way we build our houses, they will get affected by the fl floods or by the sea level rise, by the increasing cyclones, they will uh, get destroyed. If there are uh, droughts, persistent droughts, the agricultural productivity will naturally fall. The, then there will be a problem of food security. The water uh, sources will dry up. Uh, there has been a problem of the droughts throughout the uh, human civilization, but these problems are getting more and more recurrent and persistent and uh, in, they are enhanced uh, in terms of intensity. So, these are the matters uh, which concern us and these uh, fires, the, the forest fires which you talked about, these are also partly the result of the same uh, uh, development, because um, the forests are getting depleted, they are getting um, defore the deforestation is uh, rising and because of the tem temperature rise, the, uh, the, the kind of um, the, uh, the forces which affect the forests, the forests dry up there is uh, the, the climate changes there and they catch up uh, fire very easily, there is no control. Uh, so, so, all these things basically are manifestations of the aggravated nature of climate change because of human actions. And so, so the entire debate or concern about hu the climate change is essentially about how we should modify the human uh, actions the way we live our lives, the way we conduct our lives and the way we consume the natural resources. Very true. So, you rightly said that even the forest cover is depleting. It, again, it was in the news two days back that the Amazon forest cover, which is one of the thickest forest cover in the world, even that is depleting because the trees, they are unable to uh, sustain in this new environment. Because of this, as you said, there is rise in the carbon dioxide level. So, but again, these greenhouse gases, they are beneficial also. So, how can they be dangerous or even harmful for the human beings or even for this environment? No, the, the, the greenhouse gases, there are a number of them. For example, the CO2, the carbon dioxide is the most uh, important uh, gas. Uh, there are other gases, uh, nitrous oxide is there, then there is ozone. Uh, so, there are a number of gases, uh, methane for example. At times, uh, when the climate changes gradually, and the natural phenomena uh, takes place within a uh, certain um, uh, within a range which is determined by the natural process there is no concern in fact uh, uh, people say that the rising uh, the carbon dioxide concentration at times helps some of the crops uh, it is yeah. true practically yeah. but when the, the the issue is basically the change is rapid and uh, it is unstable, because the current concentration is uh, not getting balanced in th at the same rate at which it used to happen 200 years ago. In the last 150 years, because of industrialization, because the way we have started using coal and liquid uh, fuel which is coming out from the earth, we are consuming it in the manner that it is destabilizing the concentrations. Mm -hmm. Earlier what used to happen is that these greenhouse gases, although they uh, uh, were produced by the natural process, they also used to get bound in the, uh, the system of the earth mm -hmm. through carbon sinks. For example, the forests are a natural carbon sink, mm -hmm. the ocean is also a natural carbon uh, sink. So, uh, the uh, rise in uh, greenhouse gas emissions also used to be balanced by the concentration used to get sequestered in the for form of forest or bound in the earth's surface, but that is no longer happening at the same rate at, at which this balance can be maintained. So, the, there is an imbalance in the process mm -hmm. and that imbalance is because extremely rapid rise in the carbon dioxide concentration because of the consumption of the fossil fuels or the production of other um, uh, greenhouse gases like methane. Methane is uh, not a result of fossil fuel consumption, it is a result of um, um, agricultural production where we are using fertilizers mm -hmm. and the fertilizers, the more fertilizers you use, the more methane will rise 
and methane is a very highly uh, globally warming uh, gas. So these are the changes which are taking place mm -hmm. and that is why we are concerned about the greenhouse gases. They are not um, evil in uh, by themselves, mm -hmm. but the way we are uh, progressing, we are the, our civilization is progressing, that is causing a concern. So, many a times uh, young learners, they pose a question because you know uh, they see this variation in the temperature that okay winters it was less around uh, less than 20 and summers in Delhi it reaches more than 40. So, they see that much of variation. So, they think that even if there uh, in, on the whole global scenario there is a rise of even 1 degrees, how is that going to affect us? This, this is a general question which uh, students of upper primary stage they do ask that how it can affect them. Uh, they do not uh, understand the severity of this one degree rise in the temperature. So, can you elucidate a little more on that? Oh uh, Yes, th there are two dimensions. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, change in the climate can take place at the local level. Yeah. So, the local uh, uh, impacts are different, but there is a global dimension also. Very true. So, there is a general uh, surface, uh, the general uh, surface mean temperature of the earth, mm -hmm. which is global in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, that variation is very, very small, but even that small fraction of change can be hugely disastrous for us, mm -hmm. for the earth's system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, when uh, we look at the uh, variation in temperature, let us say in Delhi, mm -hmm. uh, during summer, it, uh, the range of change is almost 10 degrees from 40, it can go to 48 or the, so that it, uh, uh, range of that is very local that is seasonal. Mm -hmm. So, the seasonal changes do take place, it is only the range which is getting increased mm -hmm. and uh, also erratic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one uh, um, uh, the consequence of climate change is that the uh, there are extreme weather phenomenon taking place. Extreme weather phenomenon means the rise in temperature the range can increase from 5 to 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, at times in those uh, drought prone areas where the temperature used to shoot up to 45 in summer, it can now go up to 48, it can now go up to 50 and that will create a hugely important uh, uh, consequence for the water sources, for the water table, for the other um, uh, fauna and flora. Mm -hmm. That is the local impact, yeah. but there is a global impact of the climate change and that uh, is happening, uh, uh, we, we have to measure that change over a larger longer time scale, okay. not in terms of seasons, uh -huh. but that uh, time scale is in terms of 100 years, in terms of decades, mm -hmm. sometimes in uh, terms of 1000 years. Mm -hmm. For example, since the last ice age, mm -hmm. there are a number of ice ages, yeah. you know, it is a global cycle uh, of the climate, it keeps mm -hmm. changing. So, in this current uh, um, age of, of the earth, uh, we have to measure the change in the uh, global surface mean temperature in terms of decades. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is that the earth's average mean temperature is in the range of 14 to 15 degree. Mm -hmm. And you see in the last thousands of millions of years, mm -hmm. earth's temperature has remained static around 14 to 15 degree. Very true. But yeah. if, but in the last 100 years alone, mm -hmm. the temperature has gone up by 1 degree. So, that is hugely important. If you consider mm -hmm. the change in the millennial time scale, mm -hmm. 100 years is nothing, mm -hmm. but within 100 years we have been able to change the temperature by 1 degree, that is hugely significant. Okay. So, 1 degree rise in the earth's global mean temperature means huge, huge impact. Okay. And uh, the concern, what is concerning is that this temperature rise is still taking place. Uh, the, the predictions are that the inter, uh, governmental panel on climate change has made projections for the next century mm -hmm. and they are saying if the, we continue to consume the natural resources and the fossil fuels at the present rate, the uh, rise in temperature will not stop at 1 degree, it will go to almost 3 to 4 degree by the end of 21st century and that will be disastrous for us, for, uh, for the entire earth system. Okay. Uh, sir, I mean, this rising temperature, how is it going to affect the coastal areas? Means, will they be submerged or the islands or even the glaciers? Is it going to affect all of them? And yeah, in what yes. manner? Uh, Means, even one degree? Yes, certainly. Uh, as I said, ki, uh, the, the impacts can take place globally and it, they can also yeah. take place locally. Locally, yeah, so about the global part. Locally, the extreme weather phenomenon can affect the the uh, the um, uh, uh, glacial ice melt 
the st uh, ice around the glaciers around the arctic region it can start melting very rapidly okay. and that will cause sea level rise. Mm -hmm. uh, the estimates uh, of scientists I am not um, uh, uh, I do not remember very clearly, but they have said that just like temperature which has risen by 1 degree over the last 100 years mm -hmm. uh, at the rate of almost 0 0.2 degree per decade. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the sea level mm -hmm. has risen by almost 0 0.1 mill, uh, millimeter mm -hmm. uh, per decade. Mm -hmm. So, in the last uh, uh, 5 decades or last uh, century, you can imagine the, the kind of increase. And the sea level rise is very significant for the coastal population, mm -hmm. because most of the uh, larger uh, concentrations of population in all the countries mm -hmm. are around the coasts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because coastal areas are very fertile areas, mm -hmm. so naturally the human civilization mm -hmm. gets you know concentrated in the coastal belts, mm -hmm. and they are you will find that most of the uh, coastal cities are highly prosperous cities. Mm -hmm. Even one degree, one millimeter or two millimeter rise in the sea level can ca cause huge inundation and huge damage to the uh, properties and the uh, settlements there. So, and, and in addition to sea level rise, there are cyclones which are taking place. Mm -hmm. So, the, the more and more people are settling down uh, around the um, uh, coasts, they are more vulnerable. And uh, so, these are all uh, manifestations of climate change and we need to be concerned about it. We have to start uh, looking at the ways in which we can address this. So, uh, since it is an international problem, so at the international scenario, what has been done by the nations to take care of uh, this climate change? Uh, several efforts have been made in the last uh, uh, four or five uh, decades. You know, uh, if you recall um, the first uh, environmental conference, it was on human environment. If yeah. it is about, it was way back in 1972. Mm -hmm. Then it uh, followed. Uh, it was followed by Earth Summit in 1992. Right. Twenty years later, yeah. in fact, uh, the first time, uh, the first convention on climate change, where all the countries got together to decide how to address the climate change, was in 1992. Mm -hmm. you know, the international agreement took place. That was that is called. United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And there were two other environmental treaties at that summit, one on biodiversity, the other on de uh, desertification. But climate change was the most important uh, agreement which took place at that time. Uh, so, from that time onwards, the, in, the international community has become conscious about the problem of global climate change and uh, they have been trying to find ways. The problem is complex because it is not just about natural phenomenon. It is about, as I said, how we conduct and live our lives, True. how we consume the natural resources, mm -hmm. how we conduct our economic growth, mm -hmm. because economic growth is increasingly dependent on energy generation, energy production mm -hmm. and energy consumption. Mm -hmm. For improved standard of living, all societies need higher consumption of energy. And energy, the only major source of energy today is fossil fuel. We have no alternative forms except solar energy, uh, wind energy, the hydro power, the nuclear power. These are cleaner forms of energy, but these are expensive, these are limited. Every country does not have enough resources to access these technologies. So, therefore, the, the problem of climate change is such that its solutions have to be found in social, political and economic actions. Mm -hmm. It is not simply by addressing the carbon sinks that we can address. Although, by increasing carbon sinks, we can try and balance the, uh, the, the uh, adverse impacts of climate change, but that is not all. We need to increase uh, the, the uh, range of our actions through political action. And political action means both local as well as international. So, international agreements are one way. So, what do these international agreements do? Uh, the first agreement on climate change uh, which took place in 1992, uh, there was a protocol created under that agreement which was called Kyoto Protocol. And under that protocol, all the rich countries, there were 37 developed rich countries, they were asked to reduce their emissions, carbon dioxide emissions or, or greenhouse gas emissions by a certain pr proportion, but nobody did that. Because, because it is a, it's a political challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult for countries to bring down their standard of living, bring down their energy consumption. Mm -hmm. And no rich country would like to do that. 
Very true. But on the other hand, the entire uh, pressure started building on the developing countries, developing which are poorer mm -hmm. b and who have to increase their uh, rate of economic growth, who have to increase their uh, energy consumption. The, the, the whole debate has turned towards them, mm -hmm. because they are the ones which are growing. The rich countries are no longer growing. Mm -hmm. The growth has plateaued in mm -hmm. the rich countries. Very true. Yeah. But they have attained a very high standard of living, a high uh, energy consumption. So, the problem uh, is political partly in nature. Mm -hmm. So, it is a competitive um, challenge that the, the all the entire international community must take action to bring down the global emissions. Mm -hmm. But in bringing down the global emissions, the burden f will fall inequitably high on the developing countries and that is the political challenge. Okay. So, this is the debate currently mm -hmm. taking place under the international uh, uh, in the, in under the international agreements, but hopefully we are moving in the positive direction. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, you must have uh, uh, come across the news of the Paris, Paris agreement, agreement in 2015, yes, yeah. where for the first time every country without mm -hmm. exception, mm -hmm. all countries have agreed that they will uh, take uh, actions to bring down their emissions in a manner that is nationally determined. Mm -hmm. There will be no global uh, benchmark. Mm -hmm the benchmark or the criteria for uh, reducing the emissions will be determined by the country itself. Mm -hmm. So, for example, India also has uh, given its targets mm -hmm. for reducing emissions mm -hmm. decided by ourselves, mm -hmm. not decided by some international agreement mm -hmm. and we have done that. We have said that we will reduce our emissions by 33 to 35 percent mm -hmm. compared to 2005 level mm -hmm. in the next uh, 10 years or 12 years by 2030. Similarly, other countries have given. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, US has walked out of this agreement once again, just like okay. it did in the case of Kyoto Protocol. Uh -huh. Again, um, immediately after Barack Obama's government changed, mm -hmm. uh, the new president said that he does not want to uh, be part of the uh, Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. So, that has set back the whole international process mm -hmm. by a little bit, but still uh, there is a rec global recognition of the challenge mm -hmm. of the global uh, climate change and countries are still moving in that direction. But as I said, the, the fundamental challenge is in terms of accessing the technologies which mm -hmm. can change the way we consume our energy and produce our energy. Yeah, you are right sir. This Paris Agreement was really important because for the first time, uh, so many number of countries, they came together and in one day, they all signed an agreement. So, that itself shows that this problem is really severe about which we all need to be sensitized. Now, the next summit is going to come up in uh, uh, I think next year, is it yes. right sir? So, uh, there is uh, a video related to it in which uh, Mr. Uh, UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, he has addressed them. So, can we have a look at it because since as you said that uh, the American President has backed out from Paris Agreement. So, that way there is a furore. Uh, obviously, everybody is worried that when uh, such a developed nation is not ready to uh, bring down their standard of living or cut down the resources and the energy. then. Uh, uh, how other countries can means uh, do the same th means uh, uh, should they follow the same thing what they are doing or they should cut down the things so that way i think it's important that we look at the video in which uh, mr antonio is making an appeal so sir if you could reflect more on this thing today i'm appealing for leadership from politicians, from business and scientists, and from the public everywhere. We have the tools to make our actions effective. What we still lack, even after the Paris Agreement, is the leadership and the ambition to do what is needed. And what makes all of this even more disturbing is that we were warned. Scientists have been telling us for decades, over and over again, and far too many leaders have refused to listen, and far too few have acted with the vision the science demands. And we see the results. In some situations, they are approaching scientists' worst-case scenarios. The world's richest nations are the most responsible for the climate crisis, yet the effects are being felt first and worst by the poorest nations and the most vulnerable peoples and communities.
existing technologies are waiting to come online, cleaner fuels, alternative building materials, better batteries, and advances in farming and land use. And these and other innovations can have a major role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions so we can hit the Paris targets and inject the great ambition that is so urgently needed. Let us use the next year for transformational decisions in boardrooms, executive suites and parliaments across the world. Let us raise our sights, build coalitions and make our leaders listen. There is no more time to waste. As the ferocity of this summer's wildfires and heat waves shows, the world is changing before our eyes. We are careering towards the edge of the abyss. It is not too late to shift course. But every day that passes means the world eats up a little more and the cost of our inaction mounts. Every day we fail to act is a day that we step a little closer towards a fate that none of us want. A fate that will resonate through generations in the damage done to humankind and life on Earth. Our fate is in our hands. The world is counting on all of us to rise to the challenge before it is too late. I count on you all. Yes, Mr. Antonio Guterres, he is also appealing to all the individuals, to yeah. all of us. So, sir, means what an individual can do to arrest this climate change in no, terms of reducing right. the ecological footprint? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, as uh, we, we were discussing, the, at the international level, the countries are trying to bring down, set targets for reduction of emissions. But in our normal uh, daily lives, every individual can also contribute to this process. After all, uh, we have a national goal. India, for example, has a national goal in terms of bringing down or modifying its emissions level, not reducing the absolute level of emission, because that will be counterproductive to the growth. Uh, but uh, making it sustainable and uh, the way we consume energy in our lives, we can certainly try and do it in a manner that it is environment friendly. We should be conscious about whatever we do, uh, its impact on environment mm -hmm. because environment is as they say the mother earth, it gives us the, all the resources which we consume True. and if we do not make it sustainable, then it will be ultimately it will boomerang mm -hmm. and we will lose all sources of energy. And that will be disastrous for our uh, civilization. Mm -hmm. So, we must be conscious of this fact that every time that we consume energy, mm -hmm. we should try to conserve it as much as possible, mm -hmm. preserve it, do not waste it. For example, uh, two or three or four things which, which normally every individual can do is to uh, not waste electricity, because electricity yeah. is currently dependent on coal consumption. Mm -hmm. We uh, burn coal or fossil fuel mm -hmm. to generate electricity. So, we should conserve it maximum. We should promote efficiency of energy in the industries. Every time we go out of the houses, we should um, switch off our lights, consume as much electricity as possible, as little. Secondly, water. Water is again a precious resource and impact of climate change of the water is huge. Yeah. We should not waste water. We should protect the trees. Trees are carbon sinks. They hold the balance in the nature and uh, every tree, we should treat it like a human being. Yeah. We should protect it. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth thing is that the plastics, mm -hmm. the every day the, the amount of plastics which we are using is humongous mm -hmm. and it is uh, causing pollution and it is also destroying the earth's natural system. Mm -hmm. So, we should be conscious of not using plastics as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We should uh, uh, protect, the, uh, we should replace it by some biodegradable material. Of course, it is expensive in nature, but we should start moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the transport, we mm -hmm. should uh, uh, use as much transport uh, as little, uh, we should use more public transport than individual transport, we should consume, uh, have less cars mm -hmm. than what we have today. So, these are some of the things which an individual can do to mm -hmm. reduce its carbon footprint. Very true, you are absolutely right sir. Uh, these all are simple steps, means we need not to do anything big into it, like suppose if we are leaving a room, as you said, switching off the light, turning off the tap, not wasting the water, not wasting, see certain resources are needed in our day to day life. We cannot stop the usage, but definitely we can stop the wastage. So, if we take care of these little things, then definitely we can reduce our ecological 
footprint on this mother earth and that way we can protect our climate and our environment thank you so much sir for being here with us and enriching us with your knowledge thank you, thank you sir